Good afternoon, guys. Uh, hope everybody's doing good out there. Uh, today we're looking at chapter one. And on chapter one, we're looking at the uh, uh, body, automotive background, and uh, overview of the body of the vehicle. Uh, we're looking on page two right there. We've got the chassis overview where we have the chassis is, of course, the bottom part of the vehicle. And then we've got our shell on top. Uh, keep in mind a couple of things that you're going to be required to know are the BOF, which is body over frame type vehicles and unibody vehicles. Uh, of course, you know, <clears throat> frame construction, of course, BOF type systems, um, they were pretty much uh, prevalent from the very beginning stages of building a vehicle where we had a frame underneath there and a shell that was on top of a frame supported by about between six to eight body mounts. Uh, <clears throat> and of course now, uh, you know, we have unibody vehicles where the, the, the frame and the body are kind of molded together through pinch wells. So it's actually welded together. Uh, and, you know, when we get a, a chance to get back into the, in the lab area, uh, we start showing you how to lift the vehicle properly. We'll take a look at the lifting points because that's very important to know where the lifting points are on these vehicles. Because if we don't lift the vehicle properly, uh, the result could be uh, body damage, okay? Um, or a vehicle falling off the lift, which I've seen several times before. Um, no, not at school, but in, in a shop and in a dealership. <clears throat> so just kind of keep that in mind. On page three on the very top, uh, we've got the body terms. Um, understand that we've got an A pillar, B and C and D pillar, okay? Uh, these are the support mechanisms of the vehicle that we look at, and like I said, it's on the top of page three. Uh, you'll see it on my canvas show as well. Um, but we're gonna be required to know this stuff right here um, because it's very important when we have the rocker panels, where we're at in the front area, the lower end. Uh, we've got a cow assembly, which is the top between the, the hood and the windshield. Um, we're looking at the quarter panels in the rear, the fenders in the front. Um, you know, you'll be going to be required to do a, a worksheet later on where you're going to have to identify some of these components. Um, this normally is done in a worksheet uh, in the lab, but I'll probably get that out there to you guys so that way you can kind of work on that. Um, we've got, uh, of course, a unibody has a lower uh, lower wheelbase and a BOF, which has a wider wheelbase. And what that basically means is when you make turns, uh, on a unibody vehicle, you can make a quick U-turn uh, very easily. Whereas in a BOF, when you got a wide wheelbase, uh, you're gonna have to turn and then come back and then turn back again because it's a, a wider wheelbase area. So the uh, engines, of course, that have gone into there, the, you know, we've got inlines, you know, we've got threes, we've got fives, we've got, of course, fours, uh, six, eight, then we got 12 cylinder engines now. And BMW is coming out with a 16 uh, cylinder engine on a uh, twin turbo, as a matter of fact, on theirs coming up. And uh, as a matter of fact, this year it should be coming out with one um, that I was uh, told by one of the uh, shop foremen there at the BMW center. But, uh, you know, certainly the, the valves uh, on the engines, typically we've always had uh, two valves per cylinder, uh, intake and exhaust valve, the uh, intake being the wider part of the valve and the exhaust valve being the small end of it. Um, you know, we had uh, overhead uh, valve engines, which came in block, and then of course we have now uh, overhead camshaft uh, type of systems where we had a single cam, we've got dual cam, we've got uh, quad cams now. So uh, within the engine system, of course, we've got the cooling system, the lubrication system, the fuel system, the air intake system, uh, the starting system, then the ignition system. Uh, emission control system, which is uh, uh, prevalent uh, for us or governed by uh, EPA standards for emissions concerns, uh, that we have a positive crankcase ventilation, we have some type of exhaust gas recirculation system, and definitely we have to have catalytic converters working correctly uh, to help uh, burn out the excessive fuel uh, before it hits out the tailpipe. So uh, powertrain typically consists of of course, the transmission, the drive shaft, and the axles. Uh, and that's on page five and six there with the differentials at the end. If it's a rear wheel drive vehicle, of course, it'll be in the back. If it's got a front wheel drive vehicle, our drive axles are gonna be in the front, okay? <clears throat> the 
We've come a long way from four-wheel drives on page six on the very top, uh, where we now have automatic four-wheel drive with the push of a button. Uh, we used to have manual locks a while back, and you could install those uh, for a part-time uh, four-wheel drive. We used to have full-time four-wheel drive all the time, but then you can convert that to part-time four-wheel drive by putting lockout hubs. Uh, and now with the push of a button, now we got instantaneous four-wheel drive. Uh, electrical system, uh, we've seen that quite a bit come about with uh, all kinds of things. Uh, of course, everything on the vehicle now with all the sensors that are involved are uh, electrical. I mean, pretty much in any area, we're gonna find electricity, electric uh, parts like brakes, uh, engines, we've got sensors, transmission have sensors, air conditioning uh, with automatic climate control. Um, you know, differential, we have sensors with uh, regarding that. Of course, airbags as well. Um, so, I mean, you know, we've got, we have uh, security systems, uh, push start systems. So everything now is dealing with electrical. So if we know how to do the basic test on electricity, you know, we can pretty much iron it out uh, what areas uh, that we can determine is a fault as to why something electrically is not working correctly. Uh, heating and air conditioning, of course, uh, we've come a long way with that. Now we're coming up with uh, our, uh, it was R12 before, R134A, been prevalent since 1992. And now we're going up with, uh, as of 2018, 2019, uh, R1234YF, which is a different type of system. Uh, and of course, uh, there's a different AC recovery re uh, recycling machine for that. Uh, there's a different type of oil that's required for it. So, uh, you know, there's more training involved in doing it. Uh, the uh, eight areas of the automotive field, uh, of course, you know, we're looking on six and seven. Um, you know, engine repair is A1, automatic transmissions is A2, uh, manual train and drive axles is going to be A3. Suspension steering is A4, brakes is A5, electrical is A6, uh, heating and air conditioning is A7, and engine performance is A8. Um, within these type of certification tests, and it's on the top of page seven there, uh, technicians are, uh, are challenged to take these tests uh, based on their experience in the field. Um, also, there are plenty of study guides that are available that are out there. Um, that you can get. Motor Age happens to be, in my opinion, the best one. Uh, that's what I use to when I go to recertify for my uh, uh, ASC tests. And uh, for me, for the most part, they I like them because they have good study questions. Uh, at the end of the book, uh, you got the answers to those questions and why the answer is correct. Um, it's not just, you know, looking at, okay, well, the question then, okay, technician A is right or B is right or both are right or they're neither are right. Uh, but what why is, is the answer A, B, C, or D, okay? So that kind of helps you out with understanding the uh, subsystems. And like I said, uh, uh, as you're taking the courses that, that you're not so much the intro course, but like with your regular brake course or electrical course or your, my, my injury repair class, uh, when you come in and, and sign up for the course, as you're taking the course, it's a good idea to try and work on studying for that test as you're taking that course. So that way, prior to the end of the course, you can take that test and pass it. Uh, two years is minimum requirement to be uh, certified. However, if you're at St. Phillips and you go with, the, with our social degree program, the two years will, will uh, give you an award of one year of work experience. So that means you have another year to get some type of work experience in the automotive field to get uh, your ASC certification. You can take the test now, uh, you pass it, and what will happen is they will save that uh, with your social security number. So when you show proof of your two years, then you're gonna be given uh, uh, an ASC certification uh, credentials. Uh, it's incumbent for everybody to try and go into the website, ASC.com uh, and create a My ASC account. Uh, when you do that, uh, you're able to uh, uh, be, be receiving emails, text messages if you wanted to do that as well. Uh, regarding ASC certification. Uh, I do believe that the, uh, uh, our chairperson, uh, Mr. Scott, will be, uh, uh, we've done it in the past several semesters already, but uh, you will have an opportunity if you'd like to take one test free of charge. Uh, but you have to put St. Phillips College as in your employer. So that way uh, you can be identified as an automotive student 
uh, within our college to be able to get at least take one test. Um, and so typically it's about at least, um, if you're studying for the test, I, I give it about a month of study time before you attempt to take the test. That way uh, you have plenty of ample time to, to understand how the testing format is before you actually go in there to take it. Um, and we'll give you some more information on this a little bit later because we cover this more uh, towards module five at the end. But this is a basic overview of what we're looking at for the automotive industry. Um, but like I said, when we get a chance to get into the lab, we'll go into the process of, of getting a vehicle lifted up uh, and everybody in the classroom will have an opportunity to use a lift, the asymmetrical lift, uh, along with the jack and jack stands as well. Okay. Uh, We've got this week finishing up pretty quick on, uh, on this one. This is a one weeker. Um, we will be having our module one review that I have already scheduled at my campus to be done on uh, this weekend, uh, closing out on Monday. Uh, and then before we get into module two. So module one is typically a, a three uh, a three chapter overview of some things. And uh, like I said, we'll get a chance to uh, uh, finish this guy up and then kind of work on module two, uh, which will be forthcoming by next week. So I will post up for this week uh, in Canvas on Friday that we will have a Zoom meeting on Monday at one o'clock. So be on the lookout for that. Okay, y'all take care and be safe.